A man just confessed to stabbing a former Boy Scout leader to death, and as a result, his first-degree murder charge has been lessened to a second-degree charge uh, known as one count of passion prov provocation manslaughter. Okay, so what's going on behind this story? A man by the name of Clark Fredericks maintains that he was sexually molested and also raped by a man by the name of Dennis Pegg. Now, Dennis Pegg uh, was never charged with this. He was never tried for it. However, there were other individuals who came forward and said that they were also victims of uh, molestation and rape. And so Clark Fredericks finally decided that he wanted to take matters into his own hands. And one day after the Jerry Sandusky trial began, he and a friend decided to go to Dennis Pegg's home and then he proceeded to stab uh, Pegg more than 20 times and he died as a result. Now the incredible thing is, as Fredericks was basically saying that he was guilty, he totally confessed to this crime, the people in the courtroom stood up and gave him a round of applause. Now according to Mediate, he says the following of what happened to him when he was a kid. He says, from the time I was 8 years old until I was 12 years old, I was sexually assaulted and raped by Dennis Pegg. It started with him wanting to touch my scar that I had through open heart surgery at the age of 6. Jesus. It progressed to wrestling matches and eventually led him to raping me. CBS Local actually reported that Frederick said that Pegg would torture and kill animals while out scouting and threatened to do the same to him if Fredericks told anyone about our secret. Now, several people have come forward saying Dennis Pegg uh, did the same thing to them. The reason we don't allow for this and the reason why uh, they are right to, to put him in jail is because, well, Dennis Pegg never got a trial, right? So what if he was wrong, right? What if he had the wrong guy, you know? And now it's not. In this case, it seems unlikely. And I, I get why everybody applauded, and you know, there's a part of me that, that wants to applaud as that well. That wants to applaud as well. Uh, I'm just being honest about my humanity or lack thereof, right? But we can't have it. But at the same time, uh, I think that they were probably right to drop it to manslaughter, um, and and uh, and the statute of limitations had run on. Pegg's crimes. Yeah. So they couldn't have charged them anyway. So authorities found child pornography in Pegg's home. Again, there was another person who came forward who uh, said, look, I was a victim of the exact same thing. Is it likely that he had committed these crimes? Yes, but it's important to go through the justice system, as flawed as it is, to ensure that someone is guilty. And it's up to us to allow the justice system to decide what that punishment should be. Now. Clark Fredericks is going to serve somewhere between five to ten years in prison for what happened. But you hear his story, you read some of the details of what he went through, and it's hard to not sympathize with him. Yeah, of course. So you're kind of torn because you want the justice system to take care of it, but at the same time, he felt that this was injustice and he took the matter into his own hands, and you, I don't know, reluctantly want to applause him for it. Yeah, and, and that's literally what happened, as Anna alluded to earlier, when the prosecutors lowered the charges, the courtroom, according to the reporters, erupted in applause. Yeah, let me give you the exact statement. When Clark Fredericks pled guilty on Wednesday for the death of Dennis Pegg, the prosecutors not only dropped first degree murder charge in favor of manslaughter, but the courtroom erupted into applause as he was led away. So it reminds me of that scene uh, from. Um, uh, the Matthew McConaughey movie Samuel Jackson. Well, let him go, let him go. Right. So, look, I think the main thing he should follow the law. I'm trying to say that as many times as I can. Uh, but if if I had done that, I'm not sure I would have confessed. Interesting. So you wouldn't have confessed to stabbing this man to death. But it was part of a plea deal. He was facing a first degree murder no, charge, know, which I he know. was going to be guilty I, I of. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have driven with anybody else. I wouldn't uh, you wouldn't have found the knife. Let's not give people <laughs> okay. in the audience any ideas of how to properly kill someone and not get caught with it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but look, uh, it, putting the uh, kidding aside, kind of. Um, here you get a sense uh, of why there's even more sympathy for him because the guy is obviously not making it up. If he wanted to make it up, maybe he'd have done what I was saying that, uh, he did. He, I would have done there. Like mm -hmm. You know, like he would have tried to hide it, etc. No, he came out and said, "Look, I, I did it. It was me, and I did it because of this." Mm -hmm. Right? It's, there's no other fact pattern that's been proposed here in the press or by the authorities as to no, actually, Peg had you know slept with his wife. No, there's nothing like that, right? 
and, and other people corroborate what the terrible things Peg did. So bottom line is, you shouldn't do it, but I understand why the room applauded. I understand why the room applauded, and also one lesson to kind of take away from this, regardless of how, I know, it's really difficult to do. If you're a victim of sexual assault or rape, you have to come forward. Because and it's easy for us to say it, it is. I the know. The kid started getting molested at six. What does he know. know? And the guy started touching his scar from open heart surgery. Like, man, there's some fucking evil in this world. There really is. Yeah. So, but look, and, and at the end of the day, by the way, I, I don't agree with the death penalty either. So I wouldn't. It's not what he did is is not the right answer.